in the previous example we looked at the basic operations that you can perform on variables constants in tensorflow 2.0 let's keep it simple and just build our very first neural network many people say that handwriting recognition would be the hello world of machine learning but for now let's go even simpler than that let's teach a neural network to understand the xor gate xor represents the inequality function that is the output is true if the inputs are not alike otherwise the output is false the aim of this video is to create a simple neural network with tensorflow 2.0 for an xor gate as we already know an xor gate takes in two inputs a and b and outputs the result in form of zeros or ones 0 xor 0 is 0 0 xor 1 is 1 1 xor 0 is 1 1 xor 1 is 0 before we even build our neural network let's first install tensorflow 2.0 as you can see it's installing the required tensorflow version and removing the already existing version that we have let's now import the necessary modules which include matplotlib tensorflow numpy and pandas let's now check the tensorflow version that we have so yes we have the right version of tensorflow as well let's now proceed ahead we initialize training underscore data as a two dimensional array an array of arrays where each of the inner arrays has exactly two items we also set up target underscore data as another two dimensional array all the inner arrays in target underscore data contain just a single element now each inner array of training underscore data relates to its counterpart in target underscore data this is what we want the neural network to learn over time so value of 0 comma 0 should give out an output of 0 that is what I want my neural network to learn a value of 0 comma 1 implies that I want the neural network to output 1 and so on and so forth so let's set up the training and target data let's get to the most interesting part that is creating the model so the way you create a model in tensorflow 2.0 is directly inspired from the way you create a model in Keras the first line sets up an empty model using the sequential API but what is going on in the second line we are adding a dense layer to our model which we'll explain in more detail a bit later for now let's focus on its configuration we set input underscore dimension equal to 2 because each of our input samples is an array of length 2 if we had input data such as 0 comma 1 comma 1 our input dimensions would have been 3 the more interesting question now is what does the 4 stand for? 4 basically is the dimension of the output for this layer. If we think about our model in terms of neurons, it means that we have two input neurons, input dimension equal to 2, spreading into 4 neurons in a so called hidden layer. We also add another layer with an output dimension of 1 and without an explicit input dimension. In this case, the input dimension is implicitly bounded to be 4 since that's the output dimension of the previous layer. We have not yet talked about the most important part of our model which is activation functions. At different layers we would require different levels of activations. At the output level I want my output to be constrained between 0 and 1 that is why I make use of the sigmoid function. In the hidden layer I have no constraints in terms of the output which my hidden layer can take up. So I make use of the activation function called as relu. The way this function is defined is for all the negative values the value is 0 for all the positive value the value is the positive value itself. There is one last thing we have to do before we can start training our model. We have to configure the learning process by calling model.compile with a set of parameters. In order for the neural network to be able to make the right adjustments to the weights we need to be able to tell how good our model is performing. Or to be more specific, with neural nets we always want to calculate a number that tells us how bad our model performs and then try to get that number lower. The number is the so called loss and we can divide how the loss is calculated. Similar to how we picked relu as our activation function, we picked mean square error as our loss function simply because it's a well proven loss function. 
we could also change from the current matrix which is binary accuracy to a binary cross entropy but both of them would give similar results as this is a very simple example that brings us to the next parameter the optimizer the job of the optimizer is to find the right adjustments for the weights i'm sure by now you may guess how we picked adam as our right optimizer of choice right because it's a well proven one and that's all we have to set up before we start training our model let's look at what the model is by calling the summary function so we have two layers we have a layer with the name dense underscore three which is our output layer which gives out the output in terms of the probability score we have the next layer which is dense underscore two which is our hidden layer which gives out four outputs how it's combined is where neural networks come into picture now that we've seen what the model looks like let's start training it and whatever training we do we want to capture everything into a variable as well which is why we make use of a variable called as history so i run model dot fit so now it's training the first two parameters are training and target data the third one is the number of epochs or learning iterations and the last one tells tensorflow 2.0 how much info to print out during the training so as you can see our accuracy is constantly increasing and it's reached 100 percent after say 350 or 300 epochs once the training phase is complete we start making predictions so for the input that we had provided for it to learn which is 0 1 to give out a value of 0 1 0 to give out a value of 1 and 1 1 to give out a value of 0 is what i am able to observe once i make a prediction on the training data this small exercise helps us create a simple neural network for an XOR gate please note that in a real world scenario our predictions would be tested against data that the neural network hasn't seen during training but in this example i just wanted to demonstrate how you can create a neural network in tensorflow 2.0 let's also look at the different curves which are involved so this is how the loss keeps decreasing after every epoch or every iteration. And this is how my accuracy keeps increasing. So after the 300th epoch, my training accuracy almost shoots to around 100%. So this was my attempt at making a simple neural network in TensorFlow 2.0. If you do have any questions with what we've covered today in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. If you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then the easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos across with anyone whom you think would find them useful. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you so much for watching.